Andrew, the photographer who is on the scene. He is there. Let us know. There you are right there, live and in person. Uh, let us know. What is it like? You've been able to get on the scene. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, I got in here really late last night, um, and when I got here, I couldn't really see anything. But as the daylight started to come in uh, and dawn broke, I was able to see just the, the total destruction everywhere. I mean, the, the tornado came straight through the town and has basically destroyed almost every building in town, most of the houses. There's not a building that's untouched, from the police department to the city hall to the courthouse. Every building has extensive damage. Many houses were leveled to the ground. I was able to talk with some of those uh, people that, that were here last night when the tornado hit in their houses. And I, some of them I couldn't believe that they actually were able to live through it. Unfortunately, many people did not. Uh, there have been, I think, maybe 14 lives that were lost. Uh, and one of the gentlemen that I talked to was telling me about how he was able to make it and, and he could not believe that he lived and his mother lived through it. And, uh, but unfortunately, his sister was right down the road in a trailer and she did not make it. And uh, it's just, it's very heartbreaking. You know, as a journalist, you come and you shoot something like this, but it's hard not to become emotionally tied to these people who have lost everything. It's just very painful to, to see. Andrew. Andrew, um, this, this is a devastating situation. We're getting a look at the aerials. No question that you would be personally uh, attached to seeing something like this and, and hearing these painful stories. In, in the night last night, this wedge tornado came through. It could have been as much as a mile wide. That's why we have such uh, big destruction here. Behind you, I was able to see that there are some cars and some movement. Um, so much of the town, it likes the west side of, of Rolling Fork, maybe all of it destroyed. Who are the people who are behind you? What kind of activity is going on right where you are? So a lot of the people that were uh, here last night when the tornado hit have been displaced. They found a place to take shelter or to rest uh, last night, and now they are trying to come back and basically collect their belongings and collect their lives together. They're looking for uh, personal sentimental items, and they're looking for valuable items and they're going through their homes trying to find anything that they can because it's all lost. Many of the people that I talked to didn't have any type of insurance uh, on their vehicles and their vehicles are just completely destroyed and gone and that's, that's a large investment for them uh, for something that they have paid a lot of money for that they don't have insurance on. So uh, there's also a lot of uh, first responders that are here, a lot of volunteers that are here just to cut down limbs, to give out water, to give out food and to uh, to help a lot of these people that are in need. We do have an update, Andrew. Uh, 23 lives lost across this outbreak that happened Mississippi, Alabama, and Tennessee so far. In the light of day, portions of Rolling Fork, some of the people who sheltered in buildings were actually trapped there. So the first response that you're talking about is ongoing even at this time. And it looks like as we go throughout the day, we may hear more stories of just the impact that happened. The mayor there of Rolling Fork, where you are, says he and his wife sheltered in their bathtub and had to be uh, rescued, basically, and taken out by first responders. When you talk about this area, this portion of America, and what the neighborhoods look like, can you describe some of the homes and what the structures are like and how they might withstand up against a powerful storm like a, like a, a monster tornado? Well, I guess really nothing will stand up against that. A lot of these buildings um, are, it's a typical very small town where you have a, a, a courthouse in the center of the town and a lot of older brick buildings around it that are in the background. So they uh, really, once you get those high speed winds, really nothing's gonna ha hold up against it. And same thing with a lot of the homes. Uh, remarkably, I went down the street and I did see a, uh, uh, a group of trailers and they somehow were untouched uh, by it, which usually that's not the case. Um, but it's just a that wide swath path of destruction. 
That could have been on the east side of the town. The east side of Rolling Fork may not have been as hard hit as the west side. Would you have your photographer pull out just a little bit? I want to be able to see to the left. That is the water tower, I believe, that was crushed. It's just to the yes. left, uh, yes. camera left there. That looks like it was the water tower that was just crumpled. Basically, if you are in any small yes. town in America, they all have a water tower. Is that the one that was for Rolling Fork? Yes, it was. And so, yeah, the town is without electricity, without water, and um, apparently they did bring in some portable cellular uh, towers uh, just this morning, uh, just maybe uh, an hour ago, and we were able to get cell service back up again. Um, prior to that, there's been nothing in this town, no electricity, no cell service, no nothing. And I don't know how it's going to, I don't know how they're going to rebuild. It's it's so destroyed and every home it's i just it's it's hard to describe but Peace. the pictures will describe it i shot a lot of video this morning of a lot of the homes that were destroyed and and hearing their stories one gentleman was outside of his house and he saw the tornado coming it came on him just like that the windows behind him in his house blew out and when they blew out he jumped into the window of his house to jump inside to try and duck out of the way is whatever he could and he said a, a couch fell on top of him, and that's how he survived. Oh, these stories of survival are going to be the things that emerge. There again, we're seeing an aerial visual of the water tower that was crushed in Rolling Fork. Andrew, over your career, you've been out to see a lot of things, I imagine. Disasters are one of the things that you cover as a news journalist. How would you compare this to other scenes and other situations that you've been a part of and the stories you've had to tell? I, I would say that most of them don't have as this much of a direct hit. So you have a lot of heavy damage, but it might be just to a few homes or one neighborhood. But this went straight through the town, and it seemed to have wiped out pretty much everything that this town has. Andrew Bean, photojournalist there on the scene in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us at Fox Weather and to tell this story, which is going to be important for everyone else to hear as more severe weather threats are on the horizon. Thanks for being with us. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.